بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم alpha is a positive real number we are interested in the limit as n tends to infinity of the product g from 1 to n alpha plus g over n let's investigate the limit of the natural logarithm which is summation g from 1 to n log alpha plus g over n to obtain the limit as n tends to infinity i write this summation in this form 1 half log 1 plus 1 over alpha plus n times this function of alpha plus 1 half this integral the integrand has the fractional part of x which is x minus the floor of x how can we drive this result let's go for the general case suppose that there is a function g of x that is twice continuously differentiable on the interval from 0 to n and n is a positive integer the integral from 0 to n of g of x is summation g from 0 to n minus 1 integral from g to g plus 1 g of x dx let's focus on this integral do a change of variables y equal to x minus g when x is g y is 0 when x is g plus 1 y is equal to 1 the integrand is g of y plus g let's do integration by parts dy is dy minus 1 half this integral is equal to y minus 1 half g of y plus g we use the limits of integration when y is 1 we get 1 half of g of g plus 1 when y is equal to 0 we get minus 1 half g of g and because 0 is the lower limit of integration we get 1 half g of g then we have minus the integral of y minus 1 half times the first derivative of g let's do integration by parts again we can write down this part as d of 1 half y squared minus 1 half y when we use the limits of integration we get 0 when y is 0 and when y is 1 this term goes away we also have the integral of one half y squared minus one half y multiplied by the second derivative of g in this integral use the substitution y equal to x minus g when y is zero x is g when y is one x is g plus one the argument of the second derivative becomes x y is x minus g y minus one is x minus g minus one which is equal to minus g plus one minus x in this integral here x is between g and g plus 1 where g is a non-negative integer the floor of x is equal to g thus x minus g is the fractional part of x this bracket is 1 minus between brackets x minus g so we have 1 minus the fractional part of x we have these two sides do the summation g from 0 to n minus 1 on the left hand side we get the integral of g of x from 0 to n on the right hand side we get minus one half the integral of zero to n the second derivative of g times the fractional part of x times one minus the fractional part of x when we sum g of g plus one times half we get one half g of one plus g of two all the way to g of n when we sum g of g times one half we get one half g of zero plus g of one all the way to g of n minus one we can isolate one half g of zero we can add and subtract g of n so we also get minus one half g of n and now we can combine the sums as summation g from one to n g of g leaving the sum on one side and the other quantities on the other side we get this result here which is true for a function that is twice differentiable and the second derivative is continuous summation g from one to n g of g is equal to the integral of g from zero to n plus one half g of n minus g of zero plus one half integral x from 0 to n the second derivative times the fractional part of x times 1 minus the fractional part of x in our case function g of x is the natural logarithm of alpha plus x over n this summation is equal to the integral of this function from 0 to n g of 0 is equal to log alpha g of n is equal to log alpha plus 1 we can do integration by parts this integral is x log alpha plus x over n and we use the limits of integration when x is 0 this is 0 when x is n we get n log alpha plus 1 we also have minus integral from 0 to n x times the first derivative of this function with respect to x we get 1 over alpha plus x over n times 1 over n in the numerator we can add and subtract alpha the integrand becomes 1 minus alpha over alpha plus x over n the integral of 1 gives us this n here we have alpha integral x from 0 to n 1 over alpha plus x over n this is equal to alpha n log alpha plus x over n 
when x is zero, we get alpha n log alpha. When x is n, we get alpha n log alpha plus one. This integral is equal to n. And then we have this function of alpha, alpha plus one log alpha plus one minus alpha log alpha minus one. Recall that we are interested in the limit of this sum as n tends to infinity. Now this sum is equal to this term that does not depend on n. It depends only on the positive real number alpha. Then we have a term that is linear in n. We have n multiplied by this quantity, which is a function of alpha. And then we have this integral here, which can be shown to converge to zero as n tends to infinity. If we have beta from zero to one, the function beta times one minus beta looks like this. It's zero at zero, it's zero at one, its beak is at one half, and the beak is equal to one over four. This part of the integrand is between zero and one over four. If we multiply all sides by this term here, because it's negative, we get the inequalities reversed. Finally, we multiply by one half and integrate from zero to n. The integral is upper bounded by zero. The lower bound is minus one over eight, integral x from zero to n, one over the square of alpha n plus x. The antiderivative of alpha n plus x to the minus two is minus alpha n plus x to the minus one. Using the limits of integration, we get that the value of this integral is minus one eighth. In the denominator, we have alpha times alpha plus one times n. This lower bound tends to zero as n tends to infinity, and we have an upper bound of zero. This means that this integral converges to zero as n tends to infinity. The limit of the summation is the constant, which is a function of alpha. Then we have this function of alpha multiplied by n. To be able to evaluate the limit, we need to understand what this function is. The limit as alpha tends to zero from above of alpha log alpha is the limit as alpha tends to zero from above of log alpha over one over alpha. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the numerator is one over alpha. The derivative of the denominator is minus one over alpha squared. This ratio is minus alpha, which tends to zero as alpha tends to zero. So this part here, if you would take the limit as alpha tends to zero from above of alpha plus one, log alpha plus one minus alpha log alpha minus one, this part goes to zero. Here we put alpha equals zero. We get one times log one, which is zero. So the limit is equal to minus one. I can write down this function as alpha log alpha plus one minus alpha log alpha plus log alpha plus one minus one. These two terms can be combined as alpha log alpha plus one over alpha or alpha log one plus the reciprocal of alpha. What is the limit of this part as alpha tends to infinity? Limit as alpha tends to infinity log one plus alpha to the minus one over alpha to the minus one by L'Hopital's rule is the limit as alpha tends to infinity of one over one plus alpha to the minus one, then the derivative of the reciprocal of alpha, that's minus alpha to the minus two. We also have this in the denominator. The limit is the limit as alpha tends to infinity of one over one plus one over alpha, which is one. This part, together with the minus one, converge to zero as alpha tends to infinity. But we still have this log alpha plus one. And this grows without bound as alpha approaches infinity. What is the derivative of our function with respect to alpha? It is log alpha plus one plus alpha plus one over alpha plus one, that's one, minus log alpha plus alpha over alpha, that's one. This is log alpha plus one minus log alpha, which is strictly positive for every positive alpha. This means that the function that we have is strictly increasing as alpha tends to zero from above, the limit is minus one, and then the function grows without bound as alpha gets arbitrarily large. So we have a function that is doing something like this. This function is negative. Then for a particular value of alpha, it is equal to zero. Then it is positive. Suppose that this function of alpha is equal to zero at alpha zero, which is approximately 0 0.54221142. If alpha is in the open interval between zero and alpha zero, this function is negative. As n tends to infinity, the limit is minus infinity. If alpha is strictly greater than alpha zero, this function is strictly positive. This quantity tends to plus infinity as n tends to infinity. The limit is plus infinity. If alpha is exactly equal to alpha zero, this is equal to zero, and our limit is this constant here, one half log one plus one over alpha zero. These are the three cases. If we now talk about the limit of the product g from one to n alpha plus g over n, the limit is zero. If alpha is strictly less than alpha zero, the limit is plus infinity. If alpha is strictly less than alpha zero, if alpha is equal to alpha zero, 
the limit is e to the power of this quantity here. This is the square root of 1 plus 1 over alpha 0. 